the world continues to just, in certain aspects, spin out of control when the reality is, how I'm seeing it is, there, start, there has um, been a calm coming for some time. You see these, these internet gurus teaching the Wim Hof or the yogis or the breath work. How did you get started and where you're at today between being an eighth degree black belt training and, and starting your breath work journey to allowing other people into that world with you? Where did you begin? Okay, that's a big question. So I'm 54 years old and my process started at age eight. So 46 years ago, my entry point into meditation was actually through sound and through music. And my music teacher, my first lesson as a little eight-year-old boy, said to me, never ever listen to notes. Idiots listen to notes. Masters listen to the space in between the notes. When you listen to a note, your mind is cluttered, you hear nothing. When you listen to space or silence, the inner dialogue drops and you ha hear everything. So my entry point was Gling, hitting a note, and then listening, gling, gling. And that was my entry point to sound and music, but also my entry point into meditation. So a couple of years later when I was formally trained, and we used to sit and meditate four hours a day, I realized that I was meditating we just didn't call it meditation, we called it deep listening. And at its essence, if you want to oversimplify, what is meditation? What is it? All it is, is a gap in the incessant stream of thinking. There's a wonderful teaching in the word human being. We have the human part and we have the being part. The human part is different than when you and I were eight years old. The being part is exactly the same. That's the observer, that which observes your thought. We're still the eight-year-old boy, the eight-year-old girl observing the thoughts. And so you activate the being part and we stop the incessant stream of thinking. And there's many ways to get there. There's an infinite amount of ways to get there. My entry point was uh, deep listening, but you can get there ultimately when you're meditating. One of many techniques in meditation is you just watch your thoughts. So it's like a cat staring at a mouse hole. Just watch and wait for the thought to da, 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 come out. When it comes out, okay, let it go, and then to come back. And one way to get, the, to get the gap. And so my breath work started also at a very young age. And I was trained in the breath work of um, the martial, medical, and spiritual. See, there's three types of, um, we, we say warrior, scholar, sage. And there's different levels. When we start the training, it's you know physical strength and the sword training and the kung fu training and the like really intense qigong. I mean, we used to do this in the 80s. We used to uh, like our cold baths <laughs> was, the, was the qigong training. I, I was training in Boston, right where I uh, lived at the time, and we would go outside into the snow in February, barefoot in the shorts, and we'd have to <sighs> do all the qigong movements until steam came off of our arm. And when steam came off to our arm, so it was good. Okay, you got it. And then you go and sit inside, go sit in the hot tub. <laughs> but the idea here, it's actually simpler than you think, because all we're doing is we're generating heat. You're generating internal heat. And the internal heat, we do that through breath movement and intention. There's a lot of threes here. And that's what I'm noticing. And, and there's a re repetition of threes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, OK, so let's even, let's even back up. There's an old concept called the three treasures. The Catholics call it the Holy Trinity. Many traditions have fundamentally said the exact same thing. And the three treasures, we use the words jing, qi, shan. You don't have to remember the words, but let's remember the meaning. We are made up of matter, energy, and consciousness. The matter is everything you can see, touch, and feel. The energy is the qi, the ki, the prana, the breath, the emotion, the bioelectrical energy. It's like all of that runs through that same the energy channel. between us, around us, going through us. You got it. The everywhere. force would yeah. be that. Okay. So, it, but also emotion and breath is in this, and then the shun is the consciousness, the eternal, mm -hmm. I am. So we can use a metaphor. We can say if I have H two O, it shows up as ice, it shows up as water, it shows up as mist, but it's all H two O, solid, liquid, vapor. And so a lot of um, the medicine, modern Western medicine, is all based on the matter. 
there's very little consideration for the energy. No consideration or disregard for the intention for this and the, and the, and the, and the focus. Uh, in acupuncture, it kind of takes the look at the um, body's a circuit board because we have this internal wiring and we have the circuitry. Just like in this room, there's circuitry. You can't see all the wires, but we see the switches and we have different switches throughout the, throughout the body. So part of the process and part of the Qigong process and part of, um, I don't know if I say advanced breath work, but masterful breath work, mm -hmm. like nuanced breath work, it's really energy work. You're actually putting energy and bringing energy into the body and not just doing breathing. When I, when I hear breath work, yeah. energy work, yeah. and again, a lot of this has been solely because of the online gurus, mm -hmm. it kept me away. It kept me at arm's length because I'm like, I can't do it, I can't figure it out. But at one point, just even working with you, you allowed that any meditation is good meditation. And you, those weren't your words, but that's what I really kind of received yeah. was like any form of meditation that if at least you're attempting it, can be something that can bring you back to center or bring you, you know, to a better place. Where is it when you potentially learned that, that like just breath work in itself is healthy for an individual as opposed to being a specific, and I know I go back to Wim Hof. Yeah. It's yeah. my ignorance of saying, yeah. oh, that's the popular oh, he's one awesome. I hear. Yeah. yeah, but like other than going back to that, what kind of breath work is it that you would recommend for someone just looking to get in and find mm. the entry yeah. point? Yeah, okay, so first of all, no such thing as good or bad Zen, only Zen. Mm. Oh, I had a good meditation. Oh, I had a bad meditation. No, no, stop it. Meditation, you're always here. It's always you. It's always now. And meditation, just drop the incessant stream of thinking. Well, I, I only had a couple gaps, and last time I had a few gaps. Whatever. See, and I'll answer, I'll answer the question, but let me uh, go into a word called mindfulness. There's a whole industry of mindfulness and practicing mindfulness, and you have to work on being more mindful. See, I used to think that actually the word mindfulness was done, set up by an evil Taoist master that just wanted to confuse everyone. When I researched it, I've actually found the origin of the word mindfulness. It was a mistranslation of the word sati. And sati, a better translation would be awareness. Now, this was, I think, in like 1910 or something like that. So the guy translating it, give the guy a break. He was doing all this translation, just use the word mindful, fine. But then I think it gained steam in the 70s. But if you really think about it, the word mindful is opposite of what you're, of the truth. It's mind empty. We don't need more full. Like, okay, you need to put more things in your head to be happiness. No, no, no. You need to empty the head to be happy. And we have to empty because we have between like 50,000 and 80,000 thoughts a day. 99% are the same thoughts we had yesterday. So we get into this like skipped record loop of just cerebral activity. And we have this antenna right in here called the pineal gland. And if you want to oversimplify the, uh, the, what the pineal gland is, is think of it as the antenna to God. That's mm. what listens. It's like this little transistor radio. <laughs> you know, we listen in. But the problem is now we do things to strengthen the pineal gland, yes. But the fastest route there is actually lower the interference addition through subtraction. So mm -hmm. you actually drop da, 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 the cerebral activity and then and then you can listen. And so that's part of the part of the process. You know, and it's funny when you said the online guru. I was asked by a very popular author said, you know, about breathwork. And I've been teaching breathwork for I don't know, 35 years or something. And, and and we do, you know, we put it with the Qigong matter, energy, consciousness, breath, movement, intention, sitting, standing, moving, three types of meditation, and we put it in, and it's a, it's a whole process that we, that, that we go through. Um, and you can say, you know, is it advanced? Well, it's present. You gotta be present in it. And so I was asked, okay, well, what do you think of all these like online gurus, and now everyone's a breath master? Mm -hmm. you know? And it's easy to get into, oh, well, you know, I have so much training, and you don't have so much training, and I know so much more, and you don't, so my system is good, and you suspect, no, no, no. Wrong way to look at it. Better way to look at it is this. The actor that played Captain Kirk, William Shatner, inspired more kids to be astronauts than any real astronaut. The actor who played uh, Kwai Che Kang, mm -hmm. David Carradine, in the Kung Fu series, inspired more kids to do Kung Fu, aside from Bruce Lee, than any other real martial artist. He was an actor. Later on, he went to do martial arts. And then uh, we could probably give other examples of maybe some doctor on TV 
you know, someone who plays a doctor, I don't know these shows, but inspired more kids to be a doctor than any real doctor, because being a real doctor is kind of boring. Being a real astronaut is kind of boring. <laughs> you know, you need an actor. And to potentially get, dangerous. Yeah, to go out and sell it. So if the actors are selling the breath work, great. A rising tide lifts all boats. And guess what? Even if you do it wrong, it still works. That's the beauty of it. So it doesn't matter whether it's the Shetties or the online gurus or the, the Jasons. At the end of the day, doing something is better than not when it comes to at least taking your mind, emptying it, and allowing yourself to have the space to just breathe through it. Whatever gets you there. And there's many paths up the mountain. Now, we could say, well, look, if you're going to spend 20 minutes, let's be as efficient as possible, and let's learn some correct technique, and let's learn the energetics, and let's learn where to put your tongue, let's learn where to put your mind, let's learn where to put your fingers, let's get everything going so we get a greater ROI, return on investment, in the shorter amount of time. Well, yes, of course, and that's a form of mastery. But the key, like, you know, foundation of mastery is to be found in the presence. It's always now, it's always you, and you're always here. And so that's the presence. And so back to the word mindfulness. See, the biggest trick I could tell you is you need to work on being more mindful. Okay, really, you need to work on being more mindful. If you think about that statement, it's like telling a, you know, a fish, you better look harder for water. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and it's looking around, okay, I'm really looking hard for water. It's over here, no, it's not over here, no, it's, who's got some water for sale? Oh, no, I'll sell you water, you yeah, know, 10% in perpetuity. <laughs> I got water over here. You. That's right. <laughs> so, but that's the trick, because presence is not something you can work on. It's only something you can experience, and there's only one time of the day that you can experience presence. Now. And that's it. So and then the moment has passed. That's it. It's now. So you become now. And that's the teaching of the cross. The teaching of the cross is from resistance to allowing. From resisting, not or why have you forsaken me, to not my will, but thy will be done. It's the teaching in the movie Groundhog Day. Hmm. Remember that, where yes. everything, it's a beautiful movie, there's a beautiful spiritual teaching oh. in that, where every, he was in resistance, and so he repeated. It's like this karmic repeating. Now, in his case, it was a funny movie, so he repeated the day, and literally repeated the day. We don't literally repeat the day, but we get into these loops, and these karmic loops, and that's the loop is from resisting. And then in the movie, in the third act, I'm gonna have to paraphrase, he said something to the effect of, this moment is enough. And once he said, this moment is enough, it went from resistance, cracking open to allowing, and then everything he touched grew. So it was everything almost as if he, he was being. Yeah, exactly right. It was allowing. And just allowing God to shine through because we get into resistance. Mm. So because there's a, something that happens in, in creativity. And there's a handful of things I'm, I'm obsessed with. And one is, of course, creativity and the creative process and mastery of that, of that process. And it's in, in every artist, since the beginning of time, once you do something super cool, now it can be a Sistine Chapel, it can be a Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, or it could be a really cool sales letter, you know, or it would do web, it doesn't matter, big, small, no difference. But at the end of it, when you're finished with a creation that's like really good and that you know you put your heart and soul into and is awesome, everyone has some variation on where'd that come from? Like, huh, like, wow, this is good. Where'd that come from? It's an interesting question. Let's first realize where it didn't come from. Didn't come from you. Didn't come from me. I have over 100 albums. None of them came from me. They all came through me. And but then where did they come from? Oh, that's maybe another interview. We can have that conversation. A little deeper, a little more philosophical, <laughs> a little more. But a lot of it is getting out of the way. Mm. You get out of the way and you get into a state, a flow state, where things start to flow. And everyone experiences it. You can't be in a flow state 24-7. Impossible. But you have your moments and then you dial in your moments. And when you have them, you do whatever, whatever your craft is, like whatever your art is. And let's look at it from the from an entrepreneurial standpoint. Yeah. You know, when you look at finding that that flow state, but you bring in the factors of partnerships outside, you know, distractions. 
how do you find that you're able to flow through you know said state with all the different moving parts do you feel it's more you internally or what you've surrounded yourself with that allows you mm, to yeah, go okay. from this wow. to what's next okay that's a, that's that in itself is a whole other conversation but let me give you the, a, a few short things on that here's the first thing whatever's trying to pull you off center you think, oh, this is my obstacle. Oh, you're pulling me off. Oh, this person. Oh, this person, this person. Well, okay, one viewpoint. Another viewpoint is the center wouldn't exist if you weren't pulled off center. Mm. So the only way you can be centered is to be pulled off center. Otherwise, there's no center. So from one viewpoint, internal viewpoint, you might not say this with words or say this to every, everybody that's pulling you off center, but they're actually your best friend. It's like, wow, you really rile me up, throw me off, screwed up my entire day. You make me centered. Thank you. Inside the head voice. <laughs> it's, it's, is it almost like a rubber band uh, that's just... Well, and the mastery, the self-mastery, is how quickly can you recover? How quickly can you come back? How quickly can you let it, let it flow through, you know, whatever it is, and quickly that you cover? Because if you get thrown off center and you stay there, well, okay, then that's not good. And then if you blame other people for making you off center, that's even not good as well. Now. It's not excusing bad behavior for other people. That's a whole other thing, you know, of, of setting boundaries and having clear communication and having good partnerships and having good relationships, you know, wh whatever the partnership, you know, uh, that, that you have. But kind of your emotional, mental, spiritual state, the mastery is coming back into center. Because, you know, I, I said this in my breath mastery training. It's like, look, I know there's, there's some of you that are going to get thrown off in the next 60 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> After this session, next is in the over. next 60 seconds, <laughs> there's you know, or maybe you couldn't resist a, a text that came in and just got thrown off. Now, here's the good news the good news is that's okay, and it's not if or it's not if you get thrown off center, it's when. And so, if you just know that, and then oh, how quickly huh, can you recover? Oh, how quickly huh, you can recover? Well, if you get thrown off center in the next 60 seconds or in the next 60 hours, what's the difference? Okay, well, wait a minute, I had 60 hours of feeling good. Okay, fine, but go with me here. What's the difference? Because it's just huh, recovering and then back and then recovering. And that's part of emotional mastery, which really is part of breath mastery. I don't know how anyone makes it through the day without having being a master of breath because the breath regulates your nervous system. It expels 70% of the cellular waste and you get more energy through the breath than any other activity. How long can you go without food? How long can you go without sleep? How long can you go without water? And how long can you go without breath? So what are we being told here? What's the lowest hanging fruit? And you breathe 20,000 times or so a day. You know, every 14 months that goes on, you've logged your 10,000 hours of breathing, okay? So 10,000 hours to mastery is not necessarily true. I know people have been driving 10,000 hours are not masters of driving. <laughs> and a lot of people have been breathing 10,000 hours. You're not a master of breath. So you just have to be deliberate. And, and, and the best way to, like, like breath mastery is a little different because you're doing it every, all the time. If we said, hey, let's you know, do gardening mastery. Well, now you have to create a new habit. You have to you know, devote times of the mm -hmm. day to, you know, to do that. But you're already breathing. So you learn it. You learn a discipline. You learn a system. You learn a style. And then a little bit throughout the day while you're doing other stuff, you practice it. It's the intentionality of actually something you're already doing, but creating purpose behind it. And the, the results, they're, you, I don't even know if you can calculate them. Well, how do you feel in the morning when you do the breath master? You're in my training. It's, there, there's no comparison. It's either I am or I'm not. And when I'm not, I know that I'm off. Yeah. And that's the simplest way for and me to place it. you feel better throughout the day? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, because it is, I, it's almost as if I feel I've accomplished something and I've gone through the process and I know that it's helped regulate yeah. where I need to be. You know, one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about is, you know, the family environment and breath work and someone, we're always trying to involve our family in what our mm, daily yeah. lives are and, 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 oh, this will make you feel, you know, eat this. How do you find a natural transition for, you know, one of the family units to say, hey, this is important, and this is why I want to integrate this into our family lifestyle. Because you can't force them. You can't force a nine-year-old to yeah. go do breath work. You yeah. can't force your spouse to be like, we're doing it yeah. now. Uh -huh. Like, But that conversation to integrate that into the family so they understand the benefit when they're a little bit at arm's length of the benefits. Well, the first thing you do got to do is live it. Hmm. That's the first thing. 
So it has to just be completely in you and then just living it. So like the kids, a lot of my kids are grown, 22 and 24, mm -hmm. but it depends at the stage of life. When my kids were little toddlers, I would sit cross-legged and I'd sit and just meditate and they'd crawl all over me. <laughs> They're jumping up and down me and they would try to make dad smile. It was a big thing and I'd be like this. And they would do stuff that was so funny, toddler stuff, and then I'd, I'd do a little, <laughs> he smiled, I had that laughed, ah, there. I was like, okay, you got me, guys. You know, and then I used to do my, uh, all my yoga with my kids on my back, and mm -hmm. they'd say, chaturanga, up dog, down dog, play. They'd, they'd do the orders, and we would, and we would just, you know, so it was integrated. Then, or I would do all the Tai Chi movements in the pool, but I'd throw all the kids. You know, wave hands like clouds. We'd be in a pool, and I'd take them and spin them and move them, and, and you know, movements like that. So, creative integration <laughs> with the kids. And if you're just sitting there meditating, they'll just come along and it's like, what is that? And we'll let, let them jump all over you and let them, let them have fun and let them, let them do that. Or, you know, hey, how long can you hold your breath for? Can you hold your breath for a count to five? Let's see, let's see, can you do five? Oh, no way you can do five. What, you did five? So there's a, like a playful attitude, but it's all circumstantial because it's, you know, as a 16 year old, that's a little different. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you did it with the kids -year last year that yeah. we had. We yeah. had like 15, 20 kids and yeah. you were working through them, but you made it playful in a way to where the 10 minutes that they spent on the breath work w was fun. You got to know your audience. <laughs> yeah. Well, sometimes you might want to institute that with adults. Let's be honest. You might have an easier time with the kids out there. Do you see, so we have technologies that are constantly changing, mm. human emotions, you know, how, how we physically mm. look is not like it was 100 years ago. Yeah. Do you see breath work is almost a, as a separate entity or a separate faction that isn't something that's going to evolve? What it was 100 years ago is still what it is today. You know, it's a really good question. Uh, I mean, you know, I come from a very old lineage of, of thousands of years old, you know, 3,000 plus, probably older than that. And so the techniques have been, you know, developed and evolved over time. Uh, are they getting any better? Mm, you know, have, am, am I, did I create any of these techniques? No. All we did is we just organized them, we made them clear because they were very nonlinear. We made them linear. I wrote some really cool music to them. You know, we put them into in a way that you can understand it now. So we just took them and updated them and modernized them and made, okay, this is what you do and this is real practical and this is what you can do in five minutes. When I was teaching meditation 25 years ago, I would say, okay, you gotta meditate 40 minutes in the morning and 40 minutes at night. And everyone would say, uh, okay. Sit and meditate 40 minutes, 40 minutes a night and come see me in another week or another month or whatever it is. Try that nowadays. <laughs> yeah, I'll get right on that and they run away. So it's like the, 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 there's a change in the perception of time and it's easy to think that you don't have time, which is a very strange thing. And the reason it's the technology, it's pretty much the phone and it's just, it, it's the churn and it's the turbidity and it's wanting things instant and it's having all this instant information. Is that good or bad? Well, who cares? It just is. It is what it is, so it yeah. doesn't matter. So we can maybe judge that all day long, but that, but that doesn't matter. However, breath is the same. The human condition is the same. The eternal I am is the same. The inner circuitry in the body is still going to be the same. So there's what has been there for all time and then there's what's changing, and the wisdom is also just in knowing the difference. And then doing what ultimately works for you, because I work with entrepreneurs. Oh, I can't meditate. Well, okay. You think of meditation as, you know, the monk sitting on top of the mountain and being completely still. So an entrepreneur goes and says, you know, okay, I want to meditate, and they do a training, do a class, and they sit there, and the mind starts going, oh, my God, you should start to, to return an email. Oh, I have this to do. I have this to do. And they wind up more stressed after a 10-minute meditation or a 20-minute because they feel like they, they lost time and they don't feel any better. Well, they miss the point. They miss the mark. You know the Greek word for miss the mark is? Sin. Mm. <laughs> I love the evil laugh that came after <laughs> that, that, by the way, because that didn't that, seem like Isn't yeah. that funny, though? Yeah. But word, that's a very charged yeah. word. But no, it just means you missed the mark. That's it. Okay, fine. Then, then do it again and hit the mark. Not a big deal. And so, okay, so what I'll do is we don't do that. We don't start with that. We'll start with the breath. Because the breath, you'll feel it. 
in the breath, you're, you'll, we'll stop your mind because we'll go to the limits of the breath and we'll, we'll, we'll do something that you really have to sit and concentrate and focus, holding the in-breath, hold, holding the out-breath, starting to breathe in chi, which is just energy, bioelectrical energy, or purging and cleaning, like cleaning your, your insides, squeezing your insides out like a dish rag and to, and to, and, and to clean it. And that gets the incessant stream of thinking da, 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 to drop. And then you have this moment of clarity. So then you do wind up meditating. It's kind of like a backdoor way in the meditation. Or, you know, maybe a meditation is a walk in the woods where you stop thinking for a moment. Because when everything around you, see, only, nature, only mankind can make a straight line. When everything around you is all over the place in chaos, internally, you get more straight. When everything around you is straight, like a big city, internally, you get more chaos. That's what happens. That's why the sages usually go into nature to reach to enlightenment. Escape the, uh, yeah. you know, can you imagine what sages uh, 100 years ago, 200 years ago would see today just walking into the city and uh, the, 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 the noises, the horns, the lights, everything. Lao Tzu, when he wrote the Tao Te Ching 2,500 years ago, um, he was in court, you know, and one of the reasons he left and go to the mountains is because of the corruption in the court from 2,500 years ago. He'd have a heart attack nowadays. Yeah. Well, nothing's <laughs> changed apparently in the political arena, so I think we're okay. I think Lao Tzu would still be having like, uh, right there, and you know, probably shouldn't have touched that. <laughs> what is a simple piece of advice that if someone listening right now could actually implement tomorrow, they sit that click here, go here, do this, and your day will be a little bit easier. What would be that one piece that you would sit from where you sit right now to say, if you do this, the benefits could be X, Y, and Z. What's something that they could implement tomorrow? Have a moment of stopping the incessant stream of thinking. Because blah, 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 blah. If you can stop the mind, even for a split second, it's a crack. And you get opened up to a different level of creativity, um, a different level of awareness, and then through practice, that crack gets longer and longer. And the voice in the head starts to go down and down, and the antenna to the divine or the antenna to God, whatever word we want to use for it, listens more. Mm. And so how do you do that? That's the next, next question. Okay, there's so many ways <laughs> that you could do that. Uh, so a, some type of breath mastery program is that way. Sometimes it's done through physical activity. Uh, maybe if you jump in a cold bath at one point, you have a split second of having your mind uh, stop. Sometimes it's just out a walk in the woods. Rarely is it staring at a computer screen or scrolling on your phone. Those usually create more turbid and more activity. And that's the place we go so often. It's like, ah, I'm just gonna aimlessly scroll. When in reality is, Go on an aimless walk and actually potentially find purpose. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. 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 You can do aimless things many ways, and the well, outcome can be different. Well, you, you know, what, what happens with excessive technology, it's other people's voices, other people's ideas, other people's stuff getting put into your head as opposed to your own stuff. Mm. So it's like you're, you're getting everything else in, and it's very, very healthy. No, stop. Put down the phone. Go somewhere without your phone. And just listen. Listen to what? Listen to silence. Listen to nature. Listen to the wind. Listen to the birds. Listen to yourself walking. Listen to your heartbeat. Listen to your nervous system. It makes a pitch, it makes a sound, but usually the mind is too busy to hear it. It's sitting there talking. Uh -huh. <laughs> if you could look back, and so often we sit there and say, if I knew this when I was that age, like where would I be today? And the reality is, is I always kind of see it as you're exactly where you're supposed yeah. to be based yeah. off of the decision. So stop kicking yourself for your past. Yeah. Rewrite your past to impact your present to make the future that you want. But what would the advice be that potentially your 20-year-old self would take and you'd be like, you, you sh come on, you got to do this. What, is there something that you would take to yourself back then? Well, okay, let's look at that from a slightly different viewpoint because there's an old saying, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago, the second best time is now. Okay, so you can say, okay, what should, you know, what should I have done 20 years ago? Well, I, I don't ask myself that question. I go uh, do a, another practical question. I go 20 years into the future and then say, okay, what should I have done 20 years ago? I like that question. 
Mm. You see, so we just shift the time perspective. So say it's okay. So we're saying <laughs> let's shift it here. Yeah. Let's let's do a little bit of time travel. Let's go 20 years in the future. And now you say, okay, hey man, what you do you done 20 years ago? What's well, a couple of things? It's like, oh, okay. Well, here's what I want to do. Da 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 da. Oh, let's come back. Oh, good. Now I get to do it. That's been really a constant <laughs> rolling theme of today, past, present, future, yeah. and how do you have that conversation? Yeah. But if you think about it, you kind of broke me a little bit right there. And the greatest <laughs> ways of thinking, I'm like, wait, I'm already doing that. And in yeah. the entrepreneurial space, so often we think, like, we have to have this master plan. We have to right. have all these pieces in place. The, the performance has got to be just right. And in reality is it's just go do it. Just breathe. Yeah. And the next thing will show what it's supposed to be. If I'm doing breath work and all of a sudden I'm, you know, it's 60 seconds into it, which would be about... 10 chimes? No. Yeah, 15. About, about yeah. 15 chimes. I don't know if the, the yeah. listener knows what that means. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 yeah. <laughs> but at the end of the day, if all of a sudden I have to take a breath, that's okay. Yeah. I'm not going to die. Yeah. My body is not going to allow me to suffocate myself to where I'm going to breathe at that point. Yeah. And I kind of take that your body's going to allow you to know when you should correct course in the entrepreneur space the same way through breath work. Your body's going to let you know when you need to take that next breath. I had a student say to me, this is a while back, oh, I, I, I wish I met you 20 years ago. You know, I've been doing all this stuff for 20 years, and you just you cleaned it up, and oh, okay, I wish you, I, why couldn't we have met 20 years ago? I said, oh, no, no, we did. We did meet 20 years ago. He's like, what? Yeah, from the viewpoint of 20 years from now, yeah. we met 20 years ago. Yeah. So stop being so linear in your viewpoint of time. Because <laughs> time from one viewpoint, time is linear. From another viewpoint, it's nonlinear. Because it's always you, you're always here, and it's always now. So that part is always true. And then past and future become constructs. Now we have to build things and we plan for the future and we, you know, you take advice and we build companies, we build businesses, we build families, we build ourselves. But at the end of the day, we all suffer from the fate of impermanence. Fungus wins. Mm. <laughs> and that's you have, okay, so here's a little, a little Taoist riddle. We say, what's the opposite of death. Most people will say life. You're going to say life, but right. it's not. No. Life has no opposite. Birth is the opposite. So we have birth, death, birth, death, birth, death. And then life goes underneath. When lightning strikes a tree, there's a death, but there's also birth that happens. Uh, when, does, when does birth begin for a baby? Not, not life begin. That's a different question. When does life begin? But when does birth begin? It begins with the sword. It begins with the cutting of the cord. Yeah. Because mom experiences, mom viewpoint experiences a death losing a body part. Baby then experiences the birth. So it's like the sword creates the birth and the death simultaneously. And you can't have one without the other. Because mm -hmm. how are we yeah. supposed to know happy without sad? Right. Death without birth. Right. There's no way to understand and actually internalize that without having yeah, and a the triumph, yin a and the yang. needs a tragedy. Yeah. If everything's a tri triumph, nothing is a triumph. Why does the Super Bowl work? Because there's a built-in tragedy. Yeah. At the end, someone's going to lose. Yeah. <laughs> and some group is going to be uh, and so And coincidentally, no one remembers a month later who lost. Right. You know, but yeah. then one group is, ah, yeah. so this is as big as yeah. this. And that's why the closer the game, the bigger the tragedy for the losing the bigger the triumph. Yes. So it's like, how do you, what makes a superhero great? A supervillain. What do you call a supervillain without a superhero? A weirdo in tights. <laughs> I didn't know we were going for dad jokes, so on that note, I'm gonna bring you to one of your favorite spots, which is the rapid fire okay. questions. Uh -huh. So, but I appreciate the dad joke on there. All right, coffee or tea in the morning? Coffee. One word to describe your leadership style. Present. Favorite app on your phone right now? Throwing my phone away. Early bird or night owl? Both. The last book you read? I have a handful of books right now. I always have the I Ching, the Book of Changes, because I, I have a whole Zen Piano series that I write. I translate the Book of Changes, so I'm always going, going through that. Um, we have a whole, we, we didn't even talk about, we have a whole project where we bought a town and a bunch of gold mines. Uh, so I have a, a, a handful of books on gold. <laughs> <laughs> There's gold in them at their hills. That's right. Internal alchemy. Mm -hmm. Internal is 
a combination, I'm going to oversimplify, heat and pressure to remove the impurities to become light, which is enlightened. When you process gold, you take ore, through heat and pressure, you remove the impurities. And so you can think of this as a form of enlightened mm. ore. It's like a, 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 when a flower blossoms, you can think of a flower. A flower doesn't become a better plant. It transforms. A, a butterfly doesn't become a better caterpillar. So the transformation and, and enlightenment is a whole transforming. It's not about being better at what you're doing. It's evolving into something else. Who inspires you most? The moment. Best piece of advice you've ever received. Eight years old. Don't listen to the notes. Listen to the space. One goal for this year. I don't do goals anymore. When I was younger, when I was a younger man, I used to set goals. I used to write them down. I'm really going to talk to the producers. This is the second time <laughs> they've had me ask this. And then the person's like, I don't do goals. I'm like, this is, yeah. Goals work for certain people at certain age times. When you're young, you got to learn how to set a goal because a goal will have an obstacle. You have to learn how to remove an obstacle. All, what do you call a goal without obstacles? An activity. Yeah. It's not a goal. So you have to learn how to go through the obstacles and duck, 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 and make it. After a while, now, I have, multi I have multiple projects. I have art projects, I have business projects, I have town projects, we have mining projects, and now they all just kind of move forward and I can see them. So sometimes I like to call it hazy vision, clear action. Mm. You might have a vision here, it might not be totally clear, but okay, that vision's over here, but I, I know what I need to do right now. Clink. I see a training okay. out of that, hazy vision, clear action. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Love it. All right. Last one on there. Your go-to stress reliever. Well, the, the, the easy answer would, of course, be in the breath. But the, the best way, okay, we say this in martial arts. What's the best way to block a punch? Don't live your life in a manner that people want to hit you. <laughs> you're, you're on fire with the dad jokes today. Yeah. Move out of the way. I'm not sure how that's a dad joke, but I'll, yeah. I'll, 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 go, I'll go with it. Okay, but there's the other way. How do you, what's the best way, uh, you, know, you know, to block, block a punch? Right, don't be there. Right. Move it. If you find yourself actually blocking, you made a lot of tactical yeah. mistakes getting All the that, moments that led up to that, that you could have not done any of yeah. those, and then, you know. Yeah. Do good business and live in a nice neighborhood. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's all these different ways. You know, then we say, you know, true self-defense, defending against all fronts, germs and disease are getting stress is going to get you more than blocking a punch. That'll be for another, another conversation. Um, so the best way to relieve stress is to don't experience distress. Mm. But when you do experience distress, because there's you stress and distress. You stress is good stress. Distress is when we say stress is what we're really talking about. It's about oh, how quickly can you? Recover, and it's usually some form of breath movement and intention, some combination. In an ever-changing world, this is what I know to be true, at least for me. Those you surround yourself with, the breath that you breathe, whether intentional or not, can have an impact that you can't see down the road. So surround yourself with people that you love, intentionally breathe the words that you breathe, and just be a good damn human. It's always you. It's You're always here, here. And it's, it's always, always now. right now. Yeah. All right, Jason Campbell, thank you. Thank you, my friend.